Okay, so can you do a brief introduction of yourself and your project? Okay, sure. Thank you for having me. My name is Raymond. Uh, I'm founder of Mosfile Capital. Uh, Mosfile Capital is a liquid token fund based in Hong Kong. So we do fundamental research, understanding the projects, understanding tokens, uh, and trying to find the tokens that are understudied, undervalued, and uh, underallocated. So try to buy them all these, sell them later, try to make some money out of this uh, crypto market. So that's what we do, liquid token investor. Cool. So the next question is, um, since we're at the DAI Summit, what do you yeah. think about the integration of AI and blockchain in the future? Yeah, um, I think we are still at a very, very early stage of the integration between AI and, and the blockchain technology. Um, we have seen the launch of GBT, I guess the mass adoption back in the late 2022-ish. That's kind of the, you know, is the beginning of this whole new generation of AI technology. Um, this new generation is very interesting because um, it's the first time in history that the technology is ad advanced enough to create human beings. So uh, think about this, right? So crypto is a technology that replace or recreate government. Uh, it's recreating government in many different ways. The way money is printed and the way money is distributed. So crypto is recreating the government uh, well, AI is recreating human beings. So nowadays we're using GPT as what? As assistant, right? As extension of you, of a brand, of you, of your labor force. So effectively, uh, you are creating many mini versions of, say, for example, I'm creating many mini uh, Raymonds to work for me. <laughs> These are just mini uh, agents, right? But going forward, as the AI technology evolves over time, we'll be seeing more mini Raymonds and they'll be independent. They can, uh, you know, they can do shopping, they can buy tickets, they can just go to places for me. And then they will interact with another agent, right? Mm. Uh, so my agent will interact with Zach and Zach's agent will be yelling at my Raymond's agent and then know that, right? And the, when these agents talk to each other, they will transact, they will have a message uh, 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 deliver to each other. And all these things can be very, very powerful uh, when they are recorded on blockchain. Mm. So I think blockchain is a very interesting technology that allowed machine to talk to machine, and especially with the empowerment of smart contract. Um, and uh, and the, we're seeing what we have built over the last few years in the crypto industry are just a very, very small sandbox when it comes to the revolution of AI in the general human being. Mm, thank you. It's very interesting and very lively <laughs> explanation. So next question is, um, what's your price prediction for Bitcoin? Like this year or next year? Oh, I think Bitcoin is very, very good asset. So everyone should hold on to it. <laughs> um, so I think, okay. So Bitcoin, let's say, um, apparently we had a very bumpy 2024 as being quite challenging year for retail investors, for ETF buyers, and for uh, institutional fund managers as well. Um, we are seeing that um, the, the price has been quite volatile, but going of going forward, um, I think we are um, walking into a more um, bullish setup. Um, we are looking at a bond recuts. And I have, uh, my gut feeling is that Trump is more likely, slightly more likely to be elected. Um, and also um, our inflation is uh, well tamed. So um, employment situation is okay as well. So equities may pick up. So by the end of this year, when all the fund managers come back to their desk after a long summer break, after Labor Day, they will be back to the desk and say, and think about how to allocate risk. So that's the time uh, I believe crypto or Bitcoin will start catching up. So my end of year um, prediction for this year will be a around maybe 80,000 to 100,000. So that's something uh, I have in mind for the end of this year, um, assuming all the data points are you know still valid. Uh, but for next year, uh, in a more liquidity loosening environment, I think we might come to 120 to 150K if possible. But that will mark the, the highest, the peak of this cycle. Mm. But that's depending on a lot of factors. So let's see how it goes. Great, thank you. Um, okay, next question. What do you think about Pundix, um, what we do in general? Yeah, I think Pundix is actually a very, very interesting um, um, project. I, I think we are entering to a, um, into a world that is more chaotic and that's more uh, volatile. So sometimes I've seen that Pundix has very strong presence in Turkey. Mm. Um, and that's actually very inspiring because why do people in Turkey need crypto? Why do people in Turkey need like stablecoin payments, remittance, and here and there? Why do they need that? 
It's exactly because the local government, the Turkish government, is actually not functioning properly when it comes to creating uh, currency and maintaining the stability of the currency. So the government itself is actually destabilizing the economy, aka destabilizing the country. Uh, and we are seeing more countries actually doing that. So um, in 2024, there are actually more, more than 40 more than 40 um, countries actually holding their largest election in the last four to five years. Uh, and there's a uh, uh, huge wave of replacing the incumbent. So in fact, people are, are voting no to the previous government. Um, why? Because most of the government have had huge issue of a crisis with COVID, with money printing, with currency stability. So we're entering into this universe with all these chaos in place. So what do you do exactly? So it's actually, Pundex is actually, a, a, I guess, a, a lifeboat for people who are struggling in these countries uh, that want to preserve the wealth, that want to have access to better, um, you know, EO enhancement assets, try to, try to um, keep their monthly check um, uh, in, in, a, in a currency that is, uh, that is reasonable for them to buy bread. So I think these are just very humble ask, but in many um, parts of the world, um, these people wouldn't be able to do that without Pondex. So I think that's why Pondex is actually delivering a very different set of value to the world. Great. Thank you so much. Yeah.